OK, so we are in the course uh, called functions. So it'd probably be good if we know what a function is, just to at least start out, right? We know why we're in functions and what it's all about. Um, so to, in order to understand a function, first we have to know what a relation is. So a relation is basically going to be like, you guys have already seen a bunch of these before, um, but it's any set of mathematical data um, that we want to explore. So any set of data. And some examples of this could be like a table of values, could be an equation that we have for a function, could be a set of points. Okay, could even be a graph. Okay, so um, the big thing that you were exploring in grade nine was the line, right? So that's an example of an X and Y where we graph the set of points and we have, we connect them and that would be a relation, right? The big one that you learned in grade 10 was the quadratic, the parabola, right? So we're gonna learn a bunch of different types this year. Um, but we have a further classification which is called a function. So a function is a special type of relation. Okay, so it's a set of data, which is what we said above, right? That's a relation. This one's a special relation uh, where each x value has a unique y value. So what does this mean? I would say like in plain English, it means that you don't have two of the same x coordinate matching up with different y coordinates. So I'm gonna show you a, couple, a bunch of examples about this so you, you can kind of get to know what I mean by this. But in other words, we can say two or more of the same x coordinate do not match up with different y coordinates. Martez. Um, this is like so up with a parabola, there would be two x values that have the same y. Like, uh, so actually, other way around. So, yeah, you're right. So, there's two different y. x values that have the same y. y yeah. Other way around is what we don't want. So, we don't want two x values that have different y's. Okay. So, in a parabola, we have two different y's that, two, two different x's, sorry, that have the same y. That's okay. okay. Other way around is not. But then how would you have So I'll show you some examples. It'll make more sense once I, yeah, once we explore a little bit. So the line and the parabola that we've learned about in grade nine, those are not only relations, but they're also functions. Okay, so there's a couple little tests that we can do to see if something is a function or if it's just a relation. So I'll show you those. Is everyone okay if I scroll a little bit here? Yep. Okay, if I ever scroll too quickly, you let me know, okay? All right, so one way that we can see if a set of points is a function or just a relation is called a mapping diagram. So here we have a set of points, and how we create a mapping diagram is we're gonna do the x coordinates in one oval and the y coordinates in another. And we're just gonna list the x coordinates lowest to highest, no duplicates. So if an x coordinate repeats, you're not gonna repeat it in the oval. So for our x coordinates here, we have one, two, five and six, those are all our x's. And for our y's, negative one, two, and four. I'm not gonna write two twice, 
you just have to write it once. Okay, and then what we do is we essentially just create a mapping. So one matches up with the y coordinate two, two matches up with four, five matches up with negative one, and six matches up with two. Okay, do you really need a mapping diagram like in order to figure this out? Not really, but it's just a visual way of representing the data. Um, so basically what we would want to look for is we would want to make sure that each of these x coordinates in here only has one single line going from it to a y coordinate. So do any of these x coordinates have more than one y, one line going from them? No, they each have one, right? This one has one, this is one, this is one, this is one. So that means this is a function, okay? So it is a relation, but we can also further classify it as a function. Okay, let's try it with the next one here. We'll do the X's and the Y's. Lowest to highest, no duplicates. And then you're gonna do the mapping. So do the lines. Okay, do we have any x coordinates that have more than one line going from them? Yes. We do, right? So negative two has one single x coordinate, it's the same x coordinate, but it has two different y's. Um, so this is a relation, but not a function. I mean, you don't necessarily have to, but it's just, it, when you see them, they're gonna be written like lowest to highest usually. Okay, so certainly we can really just look at the points. Like I already see from looking at this set of points that I have two of the same X coordinate matching up with a different Y coordinate. Um, so mapping diagrams, like it's just like a visual way of just understanding what's going on with the points. Okay, so for example three, I think we can probably just look at the points and decide whether or not these things are functions. What do you guys think about the first one? You guys say function? What about this duplicate coordinate here? What do you think? So we're still talking about A though. What about these fours? Is that okay to have the same Y coordinate? That's okay. So this one can be a function. Okay, duplicate Y coordinates are fine. Um, Duplicate X coordinates matching up with different Y's, that's not a function. Okay, so what do you guys think about the second one then? Okay, right. Is a function a relation? A function is a relation, yep. Right, not all relations are functions. You got it. Okay, so this guy is just a relation, but it can't be further classified as a function. Okay, makes sense, not too bad. Okay, any questions? All right, so that's good for a set of points. We can do the mapping diagram, we can decide, we'll look at the X's. Um, what happens if we just have a graph? Um, so when we just have a graph, we use something called the vertical line test. And the vertical line test says that any possible vertical line you draw through the graph should only cross that graph once. If it crosses any vertical line that you draw, if it crosses the graph more than once, at more than one point, it's just a relation, but it's not a function. So we'll make a quick note on that. So any vertical line you draw at any point during the function must only go through once if it's a function.
Okay, so I'm going to draw you an example of a function so that we can, ex we can see what's going on with the vertical line test. Um, let's say maybe we have something like this. Maybe it goes like this. Okay, so any line that I draw, you don't have to draw the lines themselves, but I, I just want to show you. Any vertical line that I draw through here is only crossing the graph at one point, right? All of these only cross once. I could draw it anywhere, and it would only ever cross the graph once. So this, this would be an example of a function. Um, a relation, let's say we do something like this. Okay, um, now this guy, as soon as I draw even one vertical line, I can see that this is crossing at more than one point over the graph. It's crossing at two. If it crossed at three or anything, anything more than one, we'd say that's just a relation, but it's not a function. Martez. But if you drew a vertical line at the very peak? Yes. Right, so this one, like if I drew it like right here, this one only crosses once, but it has to be any vertical line that you could possibly draw anywhere. Okay, so as soon as there's one vertical line that I draw that crosses more than once, it's no good. Okay, so yeah, although we can draw where it crosses once, there's other areas where it crosses more than once. Okay, so I want you guys to see if you can draw the graph of a function and the graph of a relation. I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, hey, draw your own down here. All right, does someone want to share what their graph of a function looks like? You can just draw it in the air for me. Like this? Yeah. I'm not, like, sure. <laughs> that works? <laughs> okay, we could do something like that. Uh, another function, what did you guys draw? Zach, what did you draw? This is a straight diagonal. Oh, just like this? Yeah. Yep, perfect. That could be a function. Any others out there? Uh, Cameron? Yeah, like this? Yeah, for sure. That, that works. What about just like points? Is that a function? Yeah, it is. As long as the, I can draw only one vertical line through each of those, right? That's fine too. So it could be something like that. Perfect. So I'll just do the line. So any vertical line I draw through here is only crossing over that graph once. Okay, what did you guys draw for a relation? So, well, that one's kind of similar to our first one. You did a dollar sign? <laughs> okay, that works. Dollar sign, yeah. Uh, Lauren, what'd you draw? Oh, like this? Yep. Anything really, right? Like I could just draw something like this, and if it loops over itself, then it's just a relation but not a function, right? Because if I cross here, I'm crossing at three different points, so. Perfect. I'm good to scroll? All right. All right, there's a couple other vocabulary type things that we need to know for this unit. So you're gonna hear about a set. This is a mathematical set. It's called the set of real numbers. Um, so, the set of real numbers uh, uses the notation It's like an R with like a double bar on it. So it looks like this. Um, so I probably the question we should be asking is what is a real number? Um, it's probably anything that you can think of at this point in your mathematical knowledge. So it's really like anything 
from negative, have you guys seen this symbol before? It's like a sideways eight. Infinity, yep. So negative infinity to positive infinity. <laughs> Takes a little bit of practice. Um, so it can be, let's say, it could be zero, it could be positive, it could be negative, it could be a decimal, fraction, anything like that. Okay, and so on. Now probably the better question is, is if a real number is anything I can possibly think of, what things don't count as real numbers, right? That's probably the better question. So not a real number. Who, who just said that? Oh, what did you say? Mm. So that wouldn't be technically like a number in and of itself, though, anyways. But yes, variables definitely wouldn't be included in there. Uh, any idea, any other ideas as to what would not be a real number? Oh, not a real number. Okay? Mm, so that's kind of like fraction though, right? Like when we say 1 over 2, it's the same thing as 1 divided by 2. So <laughs> that's still a number, right? When I multiply two numbers, I get a number. So square root of a negative, that's not possible, right? So this is not a real number. I can't square root negative 4. Pardon? So something divided by zero, anything divided by zero is not a real number, right? We know that like if I have six divided by zero, let's say, um, that's undefined. So that is actually not a real number. Okay, so there's a very minimal set of things that wouldn't be considered a real number. But mostly anything that you can think of is a real number. Okay, and then we have something called domain and something called range. So domain is going to be the set of all x values of a relation. Okay, so we can write domain for any relation or any function. And when we think domain, we want to think left to right because when we think about like the Cartesian plane, you guys don't have to draw this part, the x is the left and right and the y is like the up and down, right? When we think about the graph. So when we think domain, we want to think left and right of the graph. Now there's a couple ways that we write domain in like a mathematical language. So this will probably be like your first introduction into like how we have like a standard in math for like how to write certain explanations about things. So we have a standard way, essentially, it might seem like a little bit confusing, um, but we have a standard way just so that if Thomas is doing some kind of, you know, math proof or like writing something about math and uh, Carter is doing something, we can understand each other, right? And we all have a common language, right? It's just like the English language. We all write things in the same way. So. Domain, we're going to do capital D, and then we'll always have a colon on that. And then what we do is we open up a little curly bracket. This one also requires a little bit of practice, so you can go home tonight and practice your curly brackets. And we say X, because domain has to do with the X values. And this little curved E, and you'll see something that we just learned about, which is the real numbers. So what this means in English is x is from the set of real numbers. Or sometimes we say x is an element of real numbers, so just meaning it's from the set of real numbers. Okay, and then we say, we do like a little line here, and this line means such that. And then what happens after this is different for every relation that we're approached with. Um, so it really depends on what's going on with your X's and what 
can what is on your graph and what's not on your graph. So basically what we write in this second part is any boundaries on our x's um, or anything that x can't be. There's different ways that we can say it. So I'm going to give you guys some examples in a little bit just so that you guys can kind of get used to how we write these things. But we're going to put any boundaries or restrictions on our x's. And this again will vary from relation to relation. It will be different. And then you'll close it up with a end your curly bracket. Okay, so this one will be different for all relations. All right, um, so this one is probably the most widely used like version of this sentence that we're going to write. If you have a set of points, it's actually super easy. If you have a set of points, all you're going to do is you're going to say domain, you'll open up your little curly bracket, and you're just going to write the x coordinates of your points, lowest to highest, no duplicates, like we did in the mapping diagram in the oval. Okay, so this is just for a set of points. Okay, it will be domain, and then you will write your x coordinates, lowest to highest, no duplicates. and then close up your curly brackets. Okay, range is essentially the exact same thing except for with R's instead of these capital D's and with Y's instead of X's. So with range, we want to think up and down. Okay, it's the set of all Y values of a relation. And then we're going to write it like very similarly, except I'm going to change the D to R and the X's to Y's. Okay, this will make more sense once we actually do some examples on, on it. Okay, and then again for a set of points, this one's like really similar to the mapping diagram. We just do range and then you'll write the Y coordinates, lowest to highest, no duplicates. <laughs> and then close your curly bracket. Okay, so when we think domain, we want to think left and right. When we think range, we want to think up and down. Okay, so we can write domain for basically any relation that we are approached with. We can write it for a set of points, table of values, for a graph. Equation is a little bit more difficult because we would have to know what that looks like graphically. So if, if needed, we could graph it and then decide. Um, but we're going to take a look at a couple examples of how we can use these. Okay, and again, this is just so that we all have a common language for how to express certain properties of relations and functions and things like that. Is everyone okay if I scroll here? I'll scroll just a little bit there. Okay, so for the first one, this is a set of points. I'm just going to use like uh, these. So we're just going to do domain and range. We'll write the x-coordinates lowest to highest like we did in the oval and no duplicates. So when I do domain for this guy, I will say capital D and then we'll do the colon and then I'm literally just going to write the x-coordinates 
separated by commas. So negative, uh, oh, I missed one. Negative 5, negative 2, 1, and 4. And close it up. That's it. Okay, and then for range, same thing, just with capital R. Lowest to highest, no duplicates. So negative 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And close it up. Okay, same thing for a table of values. We're going to do same deal. I'll take the domain and I'm just going to write each of the x's, lowest to highest, no duplicates. And done. Okay, so those ones are pretty straightforward. If it's just a set of points, I'm literally just thinking about a graph that has point, 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 like I showed you earlier. Um, so it basically will just be like points on a graph. You don't have to draw this, but I'm just saying. It's just specific x coordinates and they're not connected between. Okay, so when it's a set of points, it's literally just like single points on a graph, not connected in between them. Um, when it's an actual like continuous kind of like function where all the points are connected, um, we'll write domain and range using these. And those will be a little bit different depending on what we're looking at. Any questions on the first two so far? Those okay? Okay. So when we look at a graph, um, let's start with domain. Remember with domain, we want to think about left to right. So I'm always going to start off my domain when I have like a continuous graph like this that's not just like point, 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 point when it's all connected. I'm always going to start it off by just saying we're looking at all real numbers. And basically that's going to include everything, all the decimals. It will include zero. It will include negatives, positives, everything um, from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then if I don't have areas on my graph that go further toward the right and further toward the left, toward infinity and negative infinity, I need to write some restrictions on those left and right sides. So we're going to do a such that. And then we're going to tell the reader what the x's can be or what they can't be, depending on what's easier. So in this case, I think it's we can just tell them the x's go from what to what. Okay, so mathematically, you're going to put the lower boundary here. You're going to put the upper boundary here. And we're going to use what we call inequalities. So you guys were introduced to like greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, all that kind of stuff. So this is a two-sided inequality. I want x to be less than or equal to 2, but greater than or equal to negative 2. So you read this kind of like different than you read English, right? You're reading it from the center to the right and the center to the left. So this means x is less than or equal to 2, and this means x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And then you close it. So we're basically just saying it's everything from negative 2 all the way up to and including positive 2. Okay, now I get asked the question a lot, don't write this, but I get asked the question a lot, why don't we just do this? How come I can't just do that? It is more, well, I don't know if it's necessarily more work. Um, Yeah, like what am I missing in that list of numbers there? Like we're missing all the decimals all between there, right? Yeah. So this is only five x coordinates, right? I want every single thing between negative two and positive two. I want all the decimals, uh, every single little possible decimal that I could get between there. Martez? Yeah, I mean, so this is essentially, like I said, the mathematical language that like mathematicians have decided, like this is the way that we're all going to collectively write it, right? Like 
when we, when we think about the English language, we have certain grammatical rules and ways that we will all write a certain thing, right? So that's kind of the idea in math, is that we're all, we ha all have a consistent way of writing it. Okay, range. We want to think up and down with range. We're going to start this off with y is an element of real numbers. And then we're going to write the boundaries. So you want to think bottom to top for range. Can somebody tell me in plain English what the bottom of the graph is and what the top is? Zach? Negative 2 to again. Yeah, so I go from negative 2 all the way up to positive 2. So I can write this very similar to how I wrote it above. It will be lower boundary, upper boundary. You will have a y in between this time, and the signs will go the same way. So y is less than and equal to 2, and also greater than and equal to negative 2. And then close your curly bracket. Okay, so this is going to change based on kind of what we're looking at, right? So it's always going to be different. Some functions only have one boundary. They don't have two. This one starts and stops, right? Some of them just stop somewhere, but they go up forever, let's say. So that will change sometimes. Okay, let's look at a few more, and then you guys can have some time to try your own. Is everyone okay if I scroll here? Okay, let's try this one. All right, so we want to think about left and right for domain here. I want you guys to imagine that this is continuing onward from here. So as this continues onward and onward and onward, it's just going to keep getting wider and wider and wider and wider. So what's the left boundary and what's the right boundary here? It's just going to keep getting wider forever, right? So I actually don't even need to have that such that bar. I'm just going to say it's all real numbers. It goes from negative infinity to positive infinity because it just keeps getting wider and wider and wider toward the left and toward the right. Okay. For range, we'll set it up similarly. So we're going to have y is an element of real numbers. Now, do I have, when we think vertically here, do we have a bottom or a top boundary here? We have a bottom. What's the very bottom? Three. Three. And then do we have a top? No. Just goes up forever, right? So can someone give me a mathematical expression to say y is three and up? Martez? Do you guys agree? Oh, I heard something else over here. Greater or is three on the graph? Is a point on the graph? So we want three in there as well, right? Greater than or equal. Perfect. Okay, so you guys see that this one doesn't need the two sides of the boundary, right? Because it only has a lower boundary, but it goes up forever. So we only need the one sided boundary for this one rather than this one where we had lower and upper. Any questions on this one? So far, so good? OK, let's look at this one. So we're always going to start these out the same way, same deal. Do we have a left-hand boundary on this? What is that left-hand boundary? Zero. Do we have a right-hand boundary? Does this stop going toward the right ever? So can somebody make me an expression about what x can be? Uh, Cameron, go ahead. Awesome. Greater than or equal to 0. Perfect. So 0 and forward. OK, let's do range. Do we have a low boundary, bottom boundary, or upper? Yeah, you're right. 
It doesn't go past zero. Do we have an upper boundary here? We have to imagine that this function is just like continuing to kind of like go up and up and up, right? So can someone create an expression for us here? Zach, go ahead. Yeah, you're right. Awesome. Okay, so zero and then it goes up forever from there. Any questions on that one? Okay, last one for us. Okay, this one is kind of an interesting function. This will be something that you guys haven't necessarily seen before. Um, but this one has what we call asymptotes. Um, it's kind of a weird word. Um, but this one has kind of like imaginary lines that the graph naturally avoids. So it has, I'm just putting it in as a dotted line because it's not actually a real line. It's just like a, an area where the graph is like, it's going toward and then it's like, whoop, I'm not gonna go toward that line. So it's like kind of trying to avoid it. Um, and basically what this is caused by are like restrictions on the function. So like, for instance, we don't wanna ever divide by zero. So sometimes graphically that will cause an asymptote to happen where it's like, oh, I'm gonna avoid that. Um, so, does anybody know what the equation of a vertical line that cuts through zero on the x-axis is? What's the equation of any vertical line? Now I'm taking you back to grade nine. Say that louder, Carter. Sorry, x equals zero. X equals zero. And basically, that's just because every x on that line is zero, right? This is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and so on. So all the x's are 0. So you guys can probably guess. It also has what we call a horizontal asymptote, and it's an area that it avoids this way. So if this one is cutting through 0 on the y-axis, what is the name of this line? The vertical one was x equals. It's the horizontal one. There you go. OK. <laughs> So we need to pinpoint that in order to figure out domain because I need to know what those lines are that my graph is avoiding, right? So let's think about domain here. We're thinking about left to right. We're going to say x is from the set of real numbers. Okay, so do we have a left side boundary? Our graph goes forever toward the left. How about the right? goes forever toward the right. So do I just say all real numbers? There's an area here that my graph avoids, right? You have to actually hop over to get to the next part of the graph. So there's only one value that my x can't be. What's that value? Zero. So instead of saying what x can be, we're going to say what x can't be, because it can literally be anything else other than zero. So we say x cannot be zero. Because we can clearly see here, that our graph is going toward that line, toward that line, toward that line, and then it just whoop, and it goes right over that line, right? So I could trace all the way along there, but eventually I have to lift my pencil to get to the next part of that. Okay, and then range, lower boundary. This goes down forever. Upper goes up forever. But it does cross, if I'm moving my pencil from the bottom to the top, it crosses over one y value. What's that y value? Zero again, right? It crosses over this line. So we say y cannot be zero. Okay, this is kind of a new function that you guys haven't seen before. Okay, and we'll just make a little note. These are called asymptotes. Oh, I just spelled it wrong. And these are kind of like imaginary lines that our graph avoids. We'll learn more about this in a few units. OK. 
Okay, those lines don't necessarily always have to be on zero and zero. They could shift really anywhere. So they could be any number. So you just have to look at your graph and kind of see where those would be. Okay, so you guys have about 20 minutes. We're gonna work on, if you look over to the workbook package, we're just gonna work on the first page front and back. And for the very first two questions, when you're working on those guys, actually, let me just stop.